This episode is brought to you by 180 Markets, where it is our goal to bring every individual, fund manager, family office, or any qualified investor access to Australian stock exchange capital raises. If you were ever interested in how to access ASX capital raises in a super simple way, 180 Markets is for you. The sign-up process is easy. You just upload your ID, proof of your investor status, and your, and your current brokerage account information. The settlement of shares goes right into your existing account, and you can access our very next capital raise. If you're interested in free, easy access to thousands of ASX capital raises, including placements, IPOs, reverse takeovers, and more, check out 180markets.com. Hello, investors. Welcome. Yet another edition of 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. Friends, we know we like to focus on big themes, and certainly one of the big themes out there is not just energy, but renewable clean energy. And it's not just here in Australia, it's global. In fact, in Europe, they're probably further ahead than we are here. And here to talk all about it is Ian Chakos of ADX Energy. And he's gonna talk about his projects in Europe, specifically Austria, Romania, how we can make money off of this big trend and how it also can help make the planet a better place. And enough with me, Ian. Welcome to 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. Thanks, Greg. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Hey, Ian. In just a couple of minutes, can you just give us your a little bit of background history? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, my, my background is uh, I'm a petroleum engineer by background. Uh, spent uh, most of the early part of my career developing oil and gas fields and, uh, and trying to commercialize them. Uh, both in Australia and uh, overseas. Uh, and then in the later part of my career, I, I probably the, the early part of the 2000s, I ran a company called uh, Nexus Energy, uh, and that was focused on the, you know, in the East Coast where you are. Uh, actually, a lot of the, our assets were in the Gibson Basin. And, and we took that uh, little explorer from a 2 million market cap to a 1.2 billion market cap. Um, uh, company over a period of around uh, five or six years. So since that time, I, I, I spent more time uh, doing uh, work as, as a non-exec on a number of boards, and then eventually uh, went from non-exec at ADX to executive chairman, uh, supporting our CEO who's based in, uh, in Vienna. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, that's a, probably a great segue to talk about ADX, the history, because it's not every day we come across an ASX company that has assets in Austria. Can you just tell us a little bit about, about the backstory, if you will? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, the, the company actually started off as a, a gold and base metal company and then uh, uh, progressed into oil and gas in the uh, kind of around 2010. Uh, the previous MD uh, was XOMV, had a lot of high positions with OMV, so he was international in places like Tunisia, Italy, and Romania. So that's kind of the, the background to getting into some of those assets. When he left OMV, he had very good contacts in those countries, knew the landscape pretty well, and we managed to pick up uh, assets in, in those three countries. Um, uh, that gentleman moved on, uh, he and uh, from that time, the focus went from offshore because we were very focused in Tunisia, and, and Italy. And look, it just started to look a lot harder to develop oil and gas fields offshore and onshore just gave you a, a much faster pathway, uh, you know, to production and cash flow. And so we, we started to focus more on Romania and uh, out of Romania through a, a really good partnership, uh, we got into Austria. And I, and I have to say Austria is probably one of the best opportunity I've seen uh, in, a, in, a, in a long, long time. And uh, the reason is because Austria has been dominated by two, two companies essentially for over 75 years. And we're, as ADX, only the third explorer and producer uh, in that, in that uh, country. The other two, uh, the national oil company of OMV, RAG is the company that we bought our little oil field from and, and uh, has been, have been able to secure a lot of data and our, our exploration licenses after they made the decision to essentially exit the, the E&P business uh, to concentrate more on their core business, which is gas storage. 
Uh, absolutely. And, you know, it's always good to share these backstories because there's always uh, not only an entertainment value, but it also then helps make sense for the investor. And, you know, spe specifically now, can we just drill down a little bit to ADX to your projects? Can you just tell us what you have from a high level? Yeah, certainly. I mean, the, the three core areas we have now, I mean, certainly the focus is, is very much on Austria. Uh, we, we got into Austria uh, late 2019. Uh, bought a little oil field that was generating uh, 300 barrels a day, which generates net revenue of around uh, 7 million euros per annum, as all prices were in uh, 2019. Then obviously 2020 uh, with COVID, uh, things uh, got pretty tough with the oil price, uh, you know, going uh, down around uh, uh, 10 or $20 a barrel. Fortunately, in Austria, we, we never had to shut in because uh, we're, we're right next to a, a, a major modern uh, refinery, which uh, uh, the Austrians really rely on for, for their energy needs. So as a result, during the whole COVID period, we were never shut in. Importantly, as part of that transaction, we, we also got a, a really competent team of people, uh, both uh, management, uh, pr you know, production uh, people and, and exploration people. But those, those people had also been involved in, in a number of, uh, I guess, emerging renewable opportunities. So that's uh, including uh, gas storage, hydrogen storage, and also uh, geothermal. So right now, the focus is, is, is very much on Austria. We, we also have a position in Romania. Uh, and, and look, we still like the opportunities in Romania. We see a lot of uh, potential in Romania for oil and gas, as well as renewables uh, in the future. But I, and uh, we, we also have a rejuvenation project offshore Italy, but the Italians decided to take a two year break from oil and gas. Uh, and so we expect those assets will come back in the next 12 months, now that Mario Draghi's wanting to build his economy quickly. So essentially what we have uh, in Austria is the, the little field uh, in, the, in, in the, what we call the Vienna Basin, which is very close to the capital uh, in Vienna, only 40 kilometres away. That's a mature field um, that's uh, been producing for 40 or 50 years. So it's on a very flat decline. In fact, right now it's producing more than we, when we purchased it uh, with very minimal investment. And we can also see scope there uh, for increasing production. And that field is also where, uh, when, we, when we talk about hydrogen, where we see a really good opportunity to produce hydrogen and store it in, in depleted reservoirs. Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Because that's very interesting. Yeah, well, look, uh, what's interesting about that field is um, because it's been producing a long, uh, a long time, some of the reservoirs are depleted. Uh, some of the shallow reservoirs that historically produce gas can now be actually utilised for storing hydrogen. Now, that in itself is nothing uh, uh, that, that hasn't been done before. In fact, it's being done now in other places in Europe. So it's a, it's a perfectly viable technology. But what sets us aside uh, from other, if you like, uh, opportunities is right next to us is also the, the biggest wind farms in Austria and, and some of the biggest solar power generators. So what's different, uh, I say, in between, I guess, a lot of European countries in Australia is the big changes in demand between summer and winter. So in summer, you know, wind's blowing, uh, summer, uh, sun's out, lots of green power and, and lots of availability of other forms of power uh, at a relatively cheap price. When things get really cold in winter, there's not enough gas, there's not enough wind power, there's not enough solar power. So what happens in, in summer is actually a lot of the extra power actually gets what we call shed or wasted. It can't make it into the grid. So we've got these wind power generators right next to us who uh, are basically shedding power. We've got the reservoirs which can actually uh, convert that power into hydrogen and store it. And then also we're connected to the European and Austrian um, uh, methane grid or gas grid, uh, which now as the 1st of June, we can actually put hydrogen into. 
So I guess the big, the big physical, uh, I guess, influences that make this project really exciting is the availability of green power uh, that could, we could get really cheap in summer, store it through the year, and actually sell it into the power grid, into the uh, energy grid in winter uh, when we can inject uh, hydrogen into the methane grid. So that, that's kind of the physical side of the project, but obviously there's a lot of things going on in Europe that also make it, you know, very good business as well. Yeah, I mean, certainly uh, it, it almost sounds like I would call it an arbitrage opportunity as far as taking advantage of the seasonality, as you said, and, and it just so happens to be that your location is perfectly placed um, as far as to take advantage, to store it and to take advantage of the seasonality. Yeah, look, the other unique thing about our field is we, because it was one, it was the first field that was discovered in Austria, we, we actually own the field. Uh, we also own uh, a lot of the land above it, which is currently being utilised for uh, uh, mostly vineyards. So that gives us a lot of flexibility in installing electrolyzers and uh, actually utilising those reservoirs. But what's important is that the Austrian government is very supportive, not only of the oil and gas business that we're currently in, but they're also very supportive of transitioning from what they know is essential now, but in the future, they want to replace with green energy. So there's a lot of motivating factors coming uh, from uh, the ministry and the government for us to, to transition. So effectively what we're doing is redeploying assets that were historically used uh, for oil and gas, that, that could be very big part of the green uh, energy production future going forward. Um, and so we've got the assets, we've got the infrastructure, and we're very well located to do that. I mean, the other thing is the, the Austrian government's actually talking about, well, they're not talking about, they've actually legislated that they want to increase the amount of green energy by sixfold. So that arbitrage situation is just going to uh, multiply. Uh, right. And also, maybe for the audience, can you just tell about the, uh, the European emphasis on getting to, you know, to, I guess you call it like net neutral carbon emissions to going the clean energy route? Uh, you know, they're offering up a lot of, a lot of incentives. Can you just touch on the, this, the legal environment over there? Yeah, well, certainly. I mean, the, the, the ability to inject hydrogen into the pipeline network uh, is, I guess, the, the first tangible, uh, I guess, uh, uh, reflection of what the Europeans are doing. So effectively, we can start a hydrogen project tomorrow. It's not, you know, could be, but it can be. Um, the, the other important thing is that there are now in place around 750 billion euros of incentives, not just for hydrogen, but also for CO2 storage and, and geothermal. So all of those industries uh, we can utilise in, in Austria because of our uh, asset position and the infrastructure that's available in Austria. In, um, in Austria itself, uh, they're, they're looking at around 150 billion for the development of the you know, hydrogen grants and loans. So that's a, a huge amount of uh, incentives uh, for both the green power operators to increase the amount of green power that's available, but also for us to be able to utilise loans and subsidies so that we can develop uh, this uh, hydrogen power production uh, and, and move into, uh, if you like, green power generation. So uh, that, along with um, the, the, the city of Vienna, uh, which is the largest city in Austria, has announced by 2016, they want to be a hydrogen hub. So what that means, they want to switch from utilising, you know, fuel oil and gas for all their heating needs and power generation needs to hydrogen. Now, Vienna's only 40 kilometres from us. So that just provides, a, you know, an exceptional opportunity in the future from going from putting hydrogen into the existing methane network to a dedicated, if you like, uh, hydrogen economy. Absolutely. Hey, Ian, you know, we understand the whole picture now, and it certainly makes a lot of sense. In your mind, over the next 12 months, call it, what are the key catalysts we should look for from ADX? Look, I, th I think, for, first of all, uh, we, we've already announced that we're uh, 
obviously have this hydrogen storage project. And, and what's key is access to green power. So we, we've been out talking to the green power generators and, and they've, they, we're getting a lot of interest. So we expect within the next few months, we'll be able to develop a partnership for, for a pilot project uh, where we store green power, uh, hydrogen, and then uh, sell it into the network. Then with that, we can then move to upscaling to a full commercial project. So to, to give, give you a little bit of, content, uh, can, uh, I guess, um, perspective on what we're trying to do, uh, we've got about 20 reservoirs that can store hydrogen. Uh, each of those reservoirs uh, can store a, the amount of energy of about 500 mega pack Tesla batteries. So that gives you a, a sense of the scale of it. Um, and, but we're about two and a half thousand more times more cost effective than doing that. So that, that's the opportunity that we, we have in front of us. The, the, the missing piece is, 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 I guess, creating that relationship with the cream power generators. And once we have that, uh, then we can move the project forward. Uh, another exciting initiative that we're in, in, the, in the green space is going to be uh, a pilot project uh, with a, a large engineering company uh, to, uh, to basically move forward with uh, a geothermal um, uh, pilot project that uh, delivers much greater efficiency. Now, the, the exciting thing about geothermal in Austria is because we've got the Alps all around us, the, the movement of those Alps is heating up reservoirs, certainly in Upper Austria, closer to Germany, where we have our exploration acreage, there's a huge uh, you know, geothermal potential. The, the key there is to increase the amount of efficiency from converting that heat into electricity, and, and that's what we'll be working on there. So that gives you a non-interruptible uh, green energy source. Beyond that, we're, we're also looking to expand our uh, acreage footprint, which will uh, mean more geothermal opportunities, uh, more carbon storage opportunities, more depleted at reservoirs where carbon uh, can be stored. Uh, because the IPC has said for, for us to meet, uh, us being the world, to meet the one and a half uh, per, percent, uh, uh, one and a half degrees, sorry. Uh, energy targets, uh, reduction in, in, uh, in uh, CO2 targets, we, we're going to have to store CO2. So what we're also looking at ways of taking CO2 from industries like, you know, the iron smelting industry, et cetera, and storing that in subsurface reservoirs. So another area where the EU is obviously a lot further advanced than us is um, carbon trading uh, and carbon credits which also then makes CO2 storage uh, a, a, an economic business in itself. And then on the oil and gas side, uh, we're, we're expect, expecting to be drilling uh, a well uh, late this year, uh, as well as further increasing our uh, oil and gas production, both through acquisition and additional work on our existing fields. So basically what we're doing is taking that cash flow and then redeploying it into green energy opportunities that'll provide, you know, a, a strong future. Yeah, I think you just summed it up beautifully where there, you know, you're basically using one, you know, one hand to pay for another, you know, future cash flow. I think that everybody can understand that and everyone can understand, you know, how, you know, the hydrogen market is only getting bigger. It's, you know, for sure. Uh, Ian, we have to keep these interviews short. Do you have any closing remarks for the audience? Yeah, look, the only thing to say is that, you know, oil and gas can be seen as the demon, but actually a lot of, assets that have been uh, that have been utilized by oil and gas and, gas and a lot of the skills uh, uh, the ability to drill well to store uh, energy in in reservoirs can also be a big part of the solution so what we're doing is take redeploying assets and and moving forward into uh, what we think will be a really exciting uh, green energy uh, production future absolutely Ian thank you very much for your time and please definitely stay in touch Will do. Thank you very much, Greg. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thank you for watching another presentation by 180 Markets. Don't forget, 
If you want access to thousands of ASX capital raises, head on over to 180markets.com.au, sign up, and get on board for our very next capital raise. Thanks for watching.